uh, given the fact that we've had this first wave of earnings this morning, and we've got rising net interest margin, we've got rising credit loss provisions, we've got investment banking falling dramatically, uh, and then, of course, we've seen the tight lending conditions continue to persist. Break down, I'm not going to say break down all of these quarters for me, but I am going to say looking at that bigger picture, what looks like a buy here? So the buy is going to be the most interest sensitive banks and, and clearly the lending and interest rate picture is better than the investment banking side. Putting me right on the spot, you know, we're going to go with Bank of America. It has the highest ratio of net interest income to total revenue and it just have great quality and execution. Uh, we did see good results for uh, the banks for JP Morgan and even Wells Fargo today. The credit loss provisions piece of the puzzle here, does it give you any reason to pause when you when you look at this sector? Is it showing any kind of warning signs, just looking to the broader economy into next year amid the ferocious rate rises we've seen? Not yet, but it would be on the credit side and it would be really in, in credit cards. So they are building up reserves. Uh, these will be needed as we get to the middle of next year, uh, possibly for a shallow recession. Uh, but it's not going to be a soft landing. So banks are prudent on the reserve side. Uh, but if the spreads are great on lending, uh, then that might exceed what they're reserving. Uh, that's been the story today. That might change as we go into early next year. Did you see anything today that was uh, truly concerning reg regarding uh, loan deposit ratios? That's one of the things we were looking for uh, going into some of these prints. Um, it's, it's the other part of that, which, which is really deposits that actually decline. And, um, you know, there might be more competition for deposits, particularly on the consumer side. The banks have lagged a little bit and given you the best rate. Uh, so that might be an issue as well. Uh, the headcount that Leslie was talking about earlier, uh, J.P. Morgan up 9 percent on headcount. Probably in November, we'll see some, some cuts in the capital markets because investment banking in the fourth quarter is not going to be much better than the third. We just touched on B of A, but I guess given the results we've gotten today, how does it set us up for the rest of the banks to report? I think it's going to be more of the same, which is green light in terms of um, consumer and commercial bank lending. Net interest income really is on center stage. And, and we just have to endure really awful results in the capital markets for uh, investment banking. Uh, the markets are trading. Uh, Equity has actually been disappointing today. Fixed income uh, areas in that area have been pretty good. So uh, we're going to kind of get more of the same. The regional banks is going to be really the, the star. And I, my other colleague covers it, and they don't have the capital markets. I was a little bit surprised that the regional bank stocks are not up more today on the net interest hmm. income story we've heard today from the large money center banks. Okay. Uh, quick last question for you. Wells Fargo, it's up 3%. We know there's a very company-specific story that's been playing out there, this turnaround story. Uh, your take on what we heard today? Better than expected. Uh, they seem to be at least managing through their regulatory and compliance issues. They're getting their businesses back in shape. They even have a more competitive credit card. They're doing better.